Act Three, Scene One, Cyprus, Before the Castle. Enter Cassio and some musicians. Masters, play here. I will content your pains. Something that's brief, and bid good morrow, general. Music. Enter Clown. Why, masters, have your instruments been in Naples that they speak I the nose thus? How, sir? How? Are these, I pray you, wind instruments? Ay, merry are they, sir. Oh, thereby hangs a tail. Whereby hangs a tail, sir? Marry, sir, by many a wind instrument that I know. But, masters, here's money for you, and the general so likes your music that he desires you, for love's sake, to make no more noise with it. Well, sir, we will not. If you have any music that may not be heard, to it again. But, as they say, to hear music the general does not greatly care. We have none such, sir. Then put up your pipes in your bag, for I'll away. Go, vanish into air, away. Exeunt musicians. Dost thou hear, mine honest friend? No, I hear not your honest friend. I hear you. Prithee, keep up thy quillets. There's a poor piece of gold for thee. If the gentlewoman that attends the general's wife be stirring, tell her there's one Cassio entreats her a little favour of speech. Wilt thou do this? She is stirring, sir. If she will stir hither, I shall seem to notify unto her. Do, good my friend. Exit clown. Enter Iago. In happy time, Iago. You have not been abed, then? Why, no. The day had broke before we parted. I have made bold, Iago, to send in to your wife. My suit to her is that she will to virtuous Desdemona procure me some access. I'll send her to you presently. And I'll devise a mean to draw the more out of the way, that your converse and business may be more free. I humbly thank you for it. Exit, Iago. I never knew a Florentine more kind and honest. Enter Emilia. Good morrow, good lieutenant. I am sorry for your displeasure, but all will sure be well. The general and his wife are talking of it, and she speaks for you stoutly. The more replies that he you hurt is of great fame in Cyprus and great affinity, and that in wholesome wisdom he might not but refuse you. But he protests he loves you and needs no other suitor but his likings to take the safest occasion by the front to bring you in again. Yet I beseech you, if you think fit, or that it may be done, give me advantage of some brief discourse with Desdemona alone. Pray you, come in. I will bestow you where you shall have time to speak your bosom freely. I am much bound to you. Exeunt. Scene two. Cyprus, a room in the castle. Enter Othello, Iago, and gentlemen. These letters give Iago to the pilot, and by him do my duties to the senate. That done I will be walking on the works. Repair there to me. Well, my good lord, I'll do it. This fortification, gentlemen, shall we see it? We wait upon your lordship. Exeunt. Scene three. Cyprus, the garden of the castle. Enter Desdemona, Cassio, and Emilia. Be thou assured, good Cassio, I will do all my abilities in thy behalf. Good madam, do. I warrant it grieves my husband as if the cause were his. Oh, that's an honest fellow. Do not doubt, Cassio, but I will have my lord and you again as friendly as you were. Bounteous madam, whatever shall become of Michael Cassio, He's never anything but your true servant. I know it. I thank you. You do love my lord. You have known him long, and be you well assured he shall in strangeness stand no farther off than in a politic distance. Ay, but, lady, that policy may either last so long, or feed upon such nice and waterish diet, or breed itself so out of circumstance, that, I being absent, and my place supplied, my general will forget my love and service. Do not doubt that. Before Emilia here I give thee warrant of thy place. Assure thee, if I do vow a friendship, I'll perform it to the last article. My lord shall never rest. I'll watch him tame and talk him out of patience. His bed shall seem a school, his board a shrift. I'll intermingle everything he does with Cassio's suit. Therefore be merry, Cassio for thy solicitor shall rather die than give thy cause away. Madam, here comes my lord. Madam, I'll take my leave. Why stay, and hear me speak? Madam, not now. 
I am very ill at ease, unfit for mine own purposes. Well, do your discretion. Exit Cassio. Enter Othello and Iago. Ha! Huh, I like not that. What dost thou say? Uh, nothing, my lord, or if I know not what. Was not that Cassio parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord? No, sure, I cannot think it. That he would steal away so guilty like seeing you coming. I do believe twas he. How now, my lord? I have been talking with a suitor here, a man that languishes in your displeasure. Who is it you mean? Why, your lieutenant, Cassio. Good, my lord, if I have any grace or power to move you, his present reconciliation take. For if he be not one that truly loves you, that errs in ignorance and not in cunning, I have no judgment in an honest face. I prithee, call him back. Went he hence now? Ay, sooth, so humbled that he hath left part of his grief with me to suffer with him. Good love, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemon, some other time. But shalt be shortly. The sooner, sweet, for you. Shalt be to-night at supper. No, not to-night. To-morrow dinner, then. I shall not dine at home. I meet the captains at the citadel. Why, then, to-morrow night, or Tuesday morn, on Tuesday noon, or night, on Wednesday morn, I prithee, name the time, but let it not exceed three days. In faith he is penitent, and yet his trespass in our common reason, save that they say the wars must make examples out of their best, is not almost a fault to incur a private check. When shall he come? Tell me, Othello, I wonder in my soul what you would ask me that I should deny or stand so murmuring on. What, Michael Cassio, that came a-wooing with you, and so many a time when I have spoke of you dispraisingly, hath taken your part, to have so much to do to bring him in? Trust me, I could do much. Prithee, no more. Let him come when he will. I will deny thee nothing. Why, this is not a boon. Tis as I should entreat you wear your gloves, or feed on nourishing dishes, or keep you warm, or sue to you to do a peculiar profit to your own person. Nay, when I have a suit wherein I mean to touch your love indeed, it shall be full of poise and difficult weight, and fearful to be granted. I will deny thee nothing. Whereon I do beseech thee, grant me this, to leave me but a little to myself. Shall I deny you? No. Farewell, my lord. Farewell, my Desdemona. I'll come to thee straight. Emilia, come. Be as your fancies teach you. Whatever you be, I am obedient. Exit with Emilia. Excellent wretch! Perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee. And when I love thee not, chaos is come again. My noble lord. What dost thou say, Iago? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? He did, from first to last. Why dost thou ask? But for a satisfaction of my thought, no further harm. Why of thy thought, Iago? I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Oh, yes, and went between us very oft. Indeed. Indeed, ay, indeed. Discernest thou aught in that? Is he not honest? Honest, my lord. Honest, ay, honest. My lord, for aught I know. What dost thou think? Think, my lord? Think, my lord? By heaven he echoes me, as if there were some monster in his thought too hideous to be shown. Thou dost mean something. I heard thee say even now thou likest not that when Cassio left my wife. What didst not like? And when I told thee he was of my counsel in my whole course of wooing, thou criedst indeed, and didst contract and purse thy brow together, as if thou then hadst shut up in thy brain some horrible conceit. If thou dost love me, show me thy thought. My lord, you know I love you. I think thou dost, and for I know thou art full of love and honesty, and weighest thy words before thou givest them breath. Therefore these stops of thine fright me the more. For such things in a false disloyal knave are tricks of custom, but in a man that's just, they are close delations working from the heart that passion cannot rule. For Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn I think that he is honest. I think so too. Men should be what they seem, or those that be not, would they might seem none. Certain men should be what they seem. 
Why, then, I think Cassio's an honest man. Nay, yet there's more in this. I prithee speak to me as to thy thinkings, as thou dost ruminate, and give thy worst of thoughts the worst of words. Good my lord, pardon me. Though I am bound to every act of duty, I am not bound to that all slaves are free to. Utter my thoughts? Why, say they are vile and false. As where's that palace whereunto foul things sometimes intrude not? Who has a breast so pure but some uncleanly apprehensions keep leets and law days, and in sessions sit, with meditations lawful? Thou dost conspire against thy friend, Iago, if thou but thinkest him wronged, and makest his ear a stranger to thy thoughts. I do beseech you, though I perchance am vicious in my guess, as I confess, it is my nature's plague to spy into abuses, and of my jealousy shape faults that are not, that your wisdom yet from one that so imperfectly conceits would take no notice, nor build yourself a trouble out of his scattering and unsure observance. It were not for your quiet nor your good, nor for my manhood, honesty, or wisdom to let you know my thoughts. What dost thou mean? Good name, in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse steals trash. Tis something, nothing. Twas mine, tis his, and has been slave to thousands. But he that filches from me my good name robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. By heaven, I'll know thy thoughts. You cannot, if my heart were in your hand, nor shall not, whilst tis in my custody. Ha! Huh. Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. That cuckold lives in bliss, who, certain of his fate, loves not his wronger. But, oh, what damned minutes tells he o'er, who dotes, yet doubts, suspects, yet strongly loves. Oh, misery! Poor and content is rich, and rich enough. But riches finless is as poor as winter to him that ever fears he shall be poor. Good heaven, the souls of all my tribe defend from jealousy. Why, why is this? Thinkest thou I'd make a life of jealousy, to follow still the changes of the moon with fresh suspicions? No, to be once in doubt is once to be resolved. Exchange me for a goat when I shall turn the business of my soul to such exsufflicate and blown surmises matching thy inference. Tis not to make me jealous to say my wife is fair, feeds well, loves company, is free of speech, sings, plays, and dances well. Where virtue is, these are more virtuous. Nor from mine own weak merits will I draw the smallest fear or doubt of her revolt, for she had eyes and chose me. No, Iago, I'll see before I doubt. When I doubt, prove. And on the proof, there is no more but this. Away at once with love or jealousy. I am glad of it, for now I shall have reason to show the love and duty that I bear you with franker spirit. Therefore, as I am bound, receive it from me. I speak not yet of proof. Look to your wife. Observe her well with Cassio. Wear your eye, thus, not jealous nor secure. I would not have your free and noble nature out of self-bounty be abused. Look to it. I know our country disposition well. In Venice they do let heaven see the pranks they dare not show their husbands. Their best conscience is not to leave undone, but keep unknown. Dost thou say so? She did deceive her father, marrying you. And when she seemed to shake and fear your looks, she loved them most. And so she did. Why, go to, then. She that, so young, could give out such a seeming? To seal her father's eyes up close as oak? He thought t'was witchcraft. But I am much to blame. I humbly do beseech you of your pardon for too much loving you. I am bound to thee forever. I see this hath a little dashed your spirits. Not a jot. Not a jot. Uh, trust me, I fear it has. I hope you will consider what is spoke comes from my love. 
but i do see you moved i am to pray you not to strain my speech to grosser issues nor to larger reach than to suspicion i will not should you do so my lord my speech should fall into such vile success which my thoughts aimed not cassio is my worthy friend my lord i see you're moved no not much moved i do not think but desdemona is honest long live she so and long live you to think so and yet how nature erring from itself ay there's the point as to be bold with you not to affect many proposed matches of her own clime complexion and degree whereto we see in all things nature tends Faugh! one may smell in such a will most rank foul disproportion and thoughts unnatural but pardon me i do not in position distinctly speak of her though i may fear her will recoiling to her better judgment may fail to match you with her country forms and happily repent farewell farewell if more thou dost perceive let me know more set on thy wife to observe leave me iago going my lord i take my leave why did i marry this honest creature doubtless sees and knows more much more than he unfolds returning my lord i would i might entreat your honour to scan this thing no further <laughs> leave it to time though it be fit that cassio have his place for sure he fills it up with great ability yet if you please to hold him off a while you shall by that perceive him and his means note if your lady strain his entertainment with any strong or vehement importunity much will be seen in that in the meantime let me be thought too busy in my fears as worthy cause i have to fear i am and hold her free i do beseech your honour fear not my government i once more take my leave exit this fellow's of exceeding honesty and knows all qualities with a learned spirit of human dealings if i do prove her haggard though that her jesses were my dear heart-strings i'd whistle her off and let her down the wind to pray at fortune haply for i am black and have not those soft parts of conversation that chamberers have or for i am declined into the vale of years yet that's not much she's gone i am abused and my relief must be to loathe her oh curse of marriage that we can call these delicate creatures ours and not their appetites i had rather be a toad and live upon the vapour of a dungeon than keep a corner in the thing i love for others uses yet tis the plague of great ones prerogatived are they less than the base tis destiny unshunnable like death even then this forked plague is fated to us when we do quicken desdemona comes if she be false oh then heaven mocks itself i'll not believe it re-enter desdemona and emilia how now my dear othello your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited do attend your presence i am to blame why do you speak so faintly are you not well i have a pain upon my forehead here faith that's with watching twill away again let me but bind it hard within this hour it will be well your napkin is too little he puts the handkerchief from him and she drops it let it alone come i'll go in with you i am very sorry that you are not well exeunt othello and desdemona i am glad i have found this napkin this was her first remembrance from the moor my wayward husband hath a hundred times wooed me to steal it but she so loves the token for he conjured her she should ever keep it that she reserves it evermore about her to kiss and talk to i'll have the work ta'en out and give it iago what he will do with it heaven knows not i i nothing but to please his fantasy re-enter iago how now what do you here alone do not you chide i have a thing for you a thing for me it is a common thing huh 
to have a foolish wife. Oh, is that all? What will you give me now for that same handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why, that the moor first gave to Desdemona, that which so often you did bid me steal. Hast stolen it from her? No, Faith, she let it drop by negligence, and to the advantage I being here took it up. Look, here it is. A good wench, give it me. What will you do with it, that you have been so earnest to have me filch it? Snatching it. Why, what's that to you? If it be not for some purpose of import, give it me again. Poor lady shall run mad when she shall lack it. Be not act known, aunt. I have use for it. Go, leave me. Exit Emilia. I will in Cassio's lodging lose this napkin, and let him find it. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something. The more already changes with my poison. Dangerous conceits are in their natures poisons, which at the first are scarce found to distaste, but with a little act upon the blood burn like the mines of sulphur. I did say so. Look where he comes. Not poppy nor mandragora nor all the drowsy syrups of the world shall ever medicine thee to that sweet sleep which thou ordst yesterday. Re-enter Othello. <sighs> False to me. Why, how now, general? No more of that. Avaunt, be gone. Thou hast set me on the rack. I swear tis better to be much abused than but to know it a little. How now, my lord? What sense had I of her stolen hours of lust? I saw it not, thought it not, it harmed not me. I slept the next night well, was free and merry. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. He that is robbed, not wanting what is stolen, let him not know it, and he's not robbed at all. I am sorry to hear this. I had been happy if the general camp, pioneers and all, had tasted her sweet body, so I had nothing known. Oh, now for ever farewell the tranquil mind, farewell content, farewell the plumed troop and the big wars that make ambition virtue. Oh, farewell, farewell the neighing steed and the shrill trump, the spirit-stirring drum, the ear-piercing fife, the royal banner and all quality, pride, pomp, and circumstance of glorious war. And, oh, you mortal engines, whose rude throats the immortal Jove's dead clamours counterfeit, farewell, Othello's occupation's gone. Is't possible, my lord? Villain, be sure thou prove my love a whore. Taking him by the throat. Be sure of it. Give me the ocular proof, or by the worth of man's eternal soul thou hadst been better have been born a dog than answer my waked wrath. Is't come to this? Make me to see it or at the least so prove it that the probation bear no hinge nor loop to hang a doubt on, or woe upon thy life. My noble lord! If thou dost slander her and torture me, never pray more, abandon all remorse. On horror's head horrors accumulate. Do deeds to make heaven weep, all earth amazed, for nothing canst thou to damnation add greater than that. O oh, grace! O oh, heaven, defend me! Are you a man? Have you a soul or sense? God be with you. You take mine office. O oh, wretched fool that lives to make thine honesty a vice. O oh, monstrous world! Take note, take note. O oh, world to be direct and honest is not safe. I thank you for this prophet, and from thence I'll love no friend, since love breeds such offence. Nay, stay, thou shouldst be honest. I should be wise, for honesty's a fool, and loses that it works for. By the world, I think my wife be honest, and think she is not. I think that thou art just, and think thou art not. I'll have some proof. Her name that was as fresh as Diane's visage is now begrimed and black as mine own face. If there be cords or knives, poison or fire or suffocating streams, I'll not endure it. Would I were satisfied. I see, sir, you are eaten up with passion. 
I do repent me that I put it to you. You would be satisfied? Would, nay, I will. And may, but how, how satisfied, my lord? Would you, the supervisor, grossly gape on, behold her tupped? Death and damnation, oh! It were a tedious difficulty, I think, to bring them to that prospect. Damn them, then, if ever mortal eyes do see them bolster more than their own. What, then? How, then? What shall I say? Where is satisfaction? It is impossible you should see this, were they as prime as goats, as hot as monkeys, as salt as wolves in pride, and fools as gross as ignorance made drunk. But yet I say, if imputation and strong circumstances, which lead directly to the door of truth, will give you satisfaction, you may have to. Give me a living reason she's disloyal. I do not like the office, but sith I am entered in this cause so far, pricked to it by foolish honesty and love, I will go on. I lay with Cassio lately, and being troubled with a raging tooth, I could not sleep. There are a kind of men so loose of soul that in their sleeps will mutter their affairs. One of this kind is Cassio. In sleep I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary, let us hide our loves. And then, sir, would he gripe and wring my hand, cry, Oh, sweet creature, and then kiss me hard, as if he plucked up kisses by the roots that grew upon my lips. Then laid his leg over my thigh and sighed and kissed, and then cried, Cursed fate that gave thee to the moor. Oh, monstrous, monstrous! Nay, this was but his dream. But this denoted a foregone conclusion. Tis a shrewd doubt, though it be but a dream. And this may help to thicken other proofs that do demonstrate thinly. I'll tear her all to pieces. Nay, but be wise. Yet we see nothing done. She may be honest yet. Tell me this. Have you not sometimes seen a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one. Twas my first gift. I know not that. But such a handkerchief, I'm sure it was your wife's. Did I to-day see Cassio wipe his beard with? If it be that. If it be that, or any that was hers, it speaks against her with the other proofs. Oh, that the slave had forty thousand lives. One is too poor, too weak for my revenge. Now do I see tis true. Look here, Iago, all my fond love thus do I blow to heaven. Tis gone. Arise, black vengeance, from thy hollow cell. Yield up, O love, thy crown and hearted throne to tyrannous hate. Swell, bosom, with thy fraught, for tis of aspic's tongues. Yet be content. O oh, blood, blood, blood. Patience, I say. Your mind, perhaps, may change. Never, Iago, like to the Pontic Sea, whose icy current and compulsive course ne'er feels retiring ebb, but keeps due on to the Propontic and the Hellespont, even so my bloody thoughts with violent pace shall ne'er look back, ne'er ebb to humble love, till that a capable and wide revenge swallow them up. Now, by yond marble heaven, in the due reverence of a sacred vow, Kneels. I here engage my words. Do not rise yet. Kneels. Witness, you ever-burning lights above, you elements that clip us round about. Witness that here Iago doth give up the execution of his wit, hands, heart, to wronged Othello's service. Let him command and to obey shall be in me remorse. What bloody business ever! They rise. I greet my love not with vain thanks, but with acceptance bounteous, and will upon the instant put thee to it. Within these three days let me hear thee say that Cassio's not alive. My friend is dead. Tis done at your request. But let her live. Damn her, lewd minx, oh, damn her! Come, go with me apart. 
I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death for the fair devil. Now art thou, my lieutenant. I am your own, for ever. Exeunt. Scene four. Cyprus, before the castle. Enter Desdemona, Emilia, and Clown. Do you know, Sirrah, where Lieutenant Cassio lies? I dare not say he lies anywhere. Why, man? He's a soldier, and for one to say a soldier lies is stabbing. Go to, where lodges he? To tell you where he lodges is to tell you where I lie. Can anything be made of this? I know not where he lodges, and for me to devise a logic and say he lies here or he lies there, were to lie in mine own throat. Can you inquire him out and be edified by report? I will catechize the world for him, that is, make questions and by them answer. Seek him, bid him come hither, tell him I have moved my lord on his behalf, and hope all will be well. To do this is within the compass of man's wit, and therefore I will attempt the doing it. Exit. Where should I lose that handkerchief, Emilia? I know not, madam. Believe me, I had rather have lost my purse full of crusados, and but my noble moor is true of mind, and made of no such baseness as jealous creatures are. It were enough to put him to ill-thinking. Is he not jealous? Who? He? I think the son where he was born drew all such humours from him. Look where he comes. I will not leave him now till Cassio be called to him. Enter Othello. How is't with you, my lord? Well, my good lady. Aside. Oh, hardness to dissemble. How do you do, Desdemona? Well, my good lord. Give me your hand. This hand is moist, my lady. It yet hath felt no age, nor known no sorrow. This argues fruitfulness and liberal heart. Hot, hot and moist. This hand of yours requires a sequester from liberty. Fasting and prayer, much castigation, exercise devout. For here's a young and sweating devil here that commonly rebels. Tis a good hand, a frank one. You may indeed say so, for twas that hand that gave away my heart. A liberal hand. The hearts of old gave hands, but our new heraldry is hands, not hearts. I cannot speak of this. Come now, your promise. What promise, Chuck? I have sent to bid Cassio come speak with you. I have a salt and sorry room offends me. Lend me thy handkerchief. Here, my lord. That which I gave you. I have it not about me. Not? No, faith, my lord. That is a fault. That handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. She was a charmer and could almost read the thoughts of people. She told her, while she kept it, twould make her amiable and subdue my father entirely to her love. But if she lost it, or made gift of it, my father's eye should hold her loathed, and his spirits should hunt after new fancies. She, dying, gave it me, and bid me, when my fate would have me wive, to give it her. I did so, and take heed on it, make it a darling like your precious eye, to lose it or give it away, where such perdition as nothing else could match. Is't possible? Tis true, there's magic in the web of it. A sibyl that had numbered in the world the sun to course two hundred compasses, and her prophetic fury sowed the work. The worms were hallowed that did breed the silk, and it was dyed in mummy which the skilful conserved of maidens' hearts. Indeed, is true? Most veritable. Therefore look to it well. Then would to God that I had never seen it. Ha! Wherefore? Why do you speak so startlingly and rash? Is it lost? Is it gone? Speak, is it out of the way? Heaven bless us. Say you? It is not lost. But what, and if it were? How? I say it is not lost. Fetch it. Let me see it. Why, so I can, sir, but I will not now. This is a trick to put me from my suit. Pray you, let Cassio be received again. Fetch me the handkerchief, my mind misgives. Come, come, you'll never meet a more sufficient man. The handkerchief. I pray, talk me of Cassio. The handkerchief. A man that all his time hath founded his good fortunes on your love, shared dangers with you. The handkerchief. In sooth, you are to blame. Away! 
Exit. <gasps> Is not this man jealous? I ne'er saw this before. Sure there's some wonder in this handkerchief. I am most unhappy in the loss of it. Tis not a year or two shows us a man. They are all but stomachs, and we all but food. They eat us hungrily, and when they are full, they belch us. Look you, Cassio and my husband. Enter Cassio and Iago. There is no other way. To she must do it. And lo, the happiness. Go and importune her. How now, good Cassio? What's the news with you? Madam, my former suit. I do beseech you that by your virtuous means I may again exist and be a member of his love, whom I, with all the office of my heart, entirely honour. I would not be delayed. If my offence be of such mortal kind, that not my service past, nor present sorrows, nor purposed merit in futurity, can ransom me into his love again, but to know so must be my benefit. So shall I clothe me in a forced content, and shut myself up in some other course to fortune's alms. Alas, thrice gentle Cassio, my advocation is not now in tune, my lord is not my lord, nor should I know him were he in favour as in humour altered. So help me every spirit sanctified, as I have spoken for you all my best, and stood within the blank of his displeasure for my free speech. You must a while be patient. What I can do, I will, and more I will than for myself I dare. Let that suffice you. Is my lord angry? He went hence but now, and certainly in strange unquietness. Can he be angry? I have seen the cannon when it hath blown his ranks into the air and like the devil from his very arm puffed his own brother. And can he be angry? Something of moment, then. I will go to meet him. There is matter in it, indeed, if he be angry. I prithee, do so. Exit, Iago. Something sure of state, either from Venice or some unhatched practice made demonstrable here in Cyprus to him, hath puddled his clear spirit, and in such cases men's natures wrangle with inferior things, though great ones are their object. Tis even so, for let our finger ache, and it induce our other healthful members even to that sense of pain. Nay, we must think men are not gods, nor of them look for such observancy as fits the bridal. Beshrew me much, Amelia, I was, unhandsome warrior as I am, arraigning his unkindness with my soul. But now I find I had suborned the witness, and he's indicted falsely. Pray heaven it be state matters as you think, and no conception nor no jealous toy concerning you. Alas, the day! I never gave him cause. But jealous souls will not be answered so. They are not ever jealous for the cause, but jealous for they are jealous. Tis a monster begot upon itself, born on itself. Heaven keep that monster from Othello's mind. Lady, amen. I will go seek him. Cassio, walk hereabout. If I do find him fit, I'll move your suit, and seek to effect it to my uttermost. I humbly thank your ladyship. Exeunt Desdemona and Emilia. Enter Bianca. Save you, friend Cassio. What make you from home? How is it with you, my most fair Bianca? In faith, sweet love, I was coming to your house. And I was going to your lodging, Cassio. What, keep a week away? Seven days and nights? Eight score eight hours? And lovers absent hours, more tedious than the dial eight score times? Oh, weary reckoning! Pardon me, Bianca. I have this while with leaden thoughts been pressed, but I shall in a more continuate time strike off this score of absence. Sweet Bianca, giving her Desdemona's handkerchief. Take me this work out. Oh, Cassio, whence came this? This is some token from a newer friend. To the felt absence now I feel the cause. Is it come to this? Well, well. Go to, woman. Throw your vile guesses in the devil's teeth from whence you have them. You are jealous now that this is from some mistress, some remembrance. No, in good troth, Bianca. Why? Whose is it? I know not neither. I found it in my chamber. I like the work well. Ere it be demanded, as like enough it will, I'd have it copied. Take it, and do it, and leave me for this time. Leave you? 
Wherefore? I do attend here on the general, and think it no addition, nor my wish, to have him see me womaned. Why, I pray you? Not that I love you not. But that you do not love me. I pray you, bring me on the way a little, and say if I shall see you soon at night. Tis but a little way that I can bring you, for I attend here. But I'll see you soon. Tis very good. I must be circumstanced. Exeunt. End of Act Three.